Hey everybody, Marcy Newman here, your Heart Shift Coach, and I have a wonderful, wonderful spiritual teacher with me today, Donna Martini, to talk about Conversations for Peace. This is day three. And if you've tuned into my other videos, you know that what we are doing is we are looking to create more energy of peace so that we can start to navigate these days of September in particular so that we can full on wholeheartedly celebrate September 21st, which is the International Day of Peace. As you may have heard me say before, what I realized as I was preparing what I wanted to offer you um, from the very beginning, I could feel like this sensation inside of my body. I'm not going to really call it a knot, but I could definitely feel some tension in what I felt I needed to prepare and the realization that there was this huge leap that we needed to take between where we are now in the midst of what appears to be a lot of chaos and um, unrest and to be able to actually embrace that day without shunning it, without our eyes rolling to the back of our heads, without just dismissing it. It is such an important day and maybe more than ever, it is of such great importance for us now. So I want to talk with Donna, who is really just one of my favorite teachers, and talk about what peace, first off, Donna, is to you. It is the place, I think, and thank you for that too, Marcy. You are one of my favorite people and you just really appreciate all the, the, the your peers, you know, and, and yeah. a lot of people don't. You know, you, you give so much credit to where it's due and that's beautiful. You totally don't, there's no ego in you. <laughs> it's all about soul and I love that. So we're I always want to give this, that to you. Thank you, but we're all in this together and I really do believe that and frankly, I need you as much as you need me. We cannot do this um, unless we're doing it together. It must be a collaborative effort. So, and you're asking for what peace means to me, it, it, yeah. right there, putting aside that human need to be able to be it all for ourselves or whatever, not need anyone, what, but, and putting that aside, understanding the bigger picture, understanding the world's scope, and how we are each a piece of this puzzle. And we each have our gift. We each been training for something specific, maybe not even realizing that it's all gonna come together. And um, for, so peace for me is when I'm really in tune with my soul voice, where I can laugh at my human ego side, because I am human after all. I'm in this body and I gotta have an ego as long as I'm here. But to be that balanced, where I'm not overly in the spiritual and not acting like I have a body or when I'm not totally in the body acting like I don't have a soul <laughs> that's peace for me that's the space in between soulfulness and humanness is that's where tranquility ha happens oh my god I've never heard it expressed like that but it is so right on it's fantastic fantastic yeah all right tell us more well you we, let's talk about you know what we want to achieve um and I was on the phone with someone just prior to this. Uh, he is an amazing coach, amazing spiritualist, um, has so many gifts and talents, but you know, he wasn't sure of his purpose. Like he was really legitimately not understanding his purpose, not sure if he even wanted to see it. And right now, every single one of us, I don't care if you're in, the, in a coaching situation where that's who you are, or whether you're a banker, but you just feel led and guided to help in some way. We all had been shown and granted and came here with a number of specific talents and gifts and a purpose. Do we want at this moment in time to recognize that? Because I think, and I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure if you're thinking the same as me, that at the age of 59, I've been preparing for years, not knowing there was gonna be a pandemic, not knowing there was gonna be such unrest and this much threat of, like almost wars between people, right? And even just political parties. So this may be what I've been training for for 59 years. And I'm like, I have to say at this moment, bring it on. Because if, and if I don't create that peace within myself and fear, 
feel fearless to do so and know I'm protected and know that this is what I'm supposed to be doing, then how can I create peace beyond me? It ain't gonna happen, right? No, we can't give what we don't have. If we are not um, in that vibrational frequency, and I know that we talk about energy all the time, but for anyone who is not of that framework, just think about this. How, how could you give someone a glass of water if you don't have it to give them? Mm -hmm. If water is nowhere to be found. Or if you don't even recognize that they're thirsty. Or, yeah, well, that's a whole lot of thing. To help them. <laughs> we can even be worse. We're not even inclined to help them. Yeah. We don't care that they're thirsty. Exactly. So, yeah, we, right. And so if we're feeling the nudge, we need to be very honest with ourselves and our own soul. We need to say, okay, I'm willing to hear. Like I get up in the morning knowing that I need to ask. I am willing. I step into my life on purpose, with purpose. Uh, my thing is to love and serve and to live the best day and to enjoy every minute while I'm doing it and to grow and learn and share. That's me. You could be anything. With Everybody has their own gig. But to step into the day on purpose, knowing that it's not about time passing us by, we're walking through time. So we need to have purpose to walk into the future we desire, you know, that will be the most profound day and sh sharing the most that we can. If we're good humans, we want to do that, right? Or we want to achieve our goals too. So, well, you know, I think, I think we're all good humans. And I think that that's a lot of the point that for me is coming up as you're speaking. And you actually hit the nail on the head when you said, you know, you first have to recognize if somebody needs a glass of water. So mm -hmm. what we're really talking about is this awareness, right? We must we must sort of clear the air a little bit to understand that it's our responsibility to even connect with that part of us that of course wants peace. It's part of our true nature. There is not mm -hmm. one of us who comes to this earth looking for war. We come in order to self-actualize in our greatest potential, right? The greatest expression of ourselves. And yes. we have all these systems within us. And one of those superpowers is that we actually already have peace within us. And it can help to propel us and direct us. So I love that you brought that up. Mm -hmm. and, and so, and we can ask purposefully uh, in, in any given moment of any day, we can at this say, at this moment, I wanna feel peace. I want to know what that is. I want to recognize it so I can bring it about all the time. And when we ask for that, it's not selfish. It's not like we need to stop our day to do it. We can literally be in a meeting recognizing heated tension and want to bring ourselves to peace so we can be more effectual in that meeting. You know, like it's so simple or even our family or at the dinner table or whatever. So that place in between where there's that tranquility of knowing that you're balanced and that you can hear your soul very well and you're not acting out in the ego, that's where you need to be. How easy is that to get to by just asking for it? Literally, you just ask for it, it's there. It's not like our soul's jumping in and has to go on traveling to get to us. It's, it's like, it's always, we're always connected to it, but we need to be able to disconnect from one to tap into the other. And in that moment in between, that's where, that's where it sort of just happens. The magic happens. We just have to be willing, is what I'm trying to say. Well, let's go back to your original definition of what peace was for you. Because you talked about that balance between being soul and being human. Mm -hmm. And obviously, when we are in a state of unrest, we are more in our humanness than we are in our soulness. Yes. If that's even a word. <laughs> oh, totally. That's exactly what you know. It's, I right? hear it that way, to be honest. And it, maybe I'm downloading it a certain way or making it up. Who knows? But I truly go from humanness to soulfulness in my own mind when I'm asking for it. And that's what I teach my coaching clients to do. So um, wait, I, I want to ask a, an important yeah. question because this is such um, a, a valuable moment for us. Can you outline for people what they might recognize in themselves that is telling them that they need to come more into their soulfulness to find balance? So easy. Number one, judgment. 
<laughs> Number one. Bingo. <laughs> okay. Right then and there. As soon as we hear a word, we're jumping on it. There's complete judgment. You, I say to people all the time, the second you're in judgment, you're out of soul. You're totally human. And guess what? You're judging someone for, for judging, or you're judging someone for doing something that you're doing right now. Because it's not, it's a human thing and we're allowed. We're totally allowed. But if you really want to know how to be the best self you can be, you will ask in that moment, all right, I know this is human. I'm allowed to judge if I want, but I really want to see more. Is there more to see? Am, am I, can I get to the next level? Now, if we're in anxiety, anger, or fear, we have to recognize that those are still gifts because we're, it gives us power, those three. It protects us. It shows us another side. It gives us clarity. You know, all these things that happen with anxiety, fear, or anger. But if it's making us feel anxious, fearful, or angry, <laughs> it's a difference. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. And in that moment, um, you know, I always think back to the story in the Bible of Jesus flipping the tables you know, on the gamblers, that that's oh, a yeah. righteous indication. In I always wondered, do you regret that, you know, or was it appropriate? Because we always feel, we, we feel like there's, we have to do something when we get into that state. If we're anxiety, we may want to talk too much. If we're fearful, we may want to run away. If we're angry, we need, we, we, we want to act out. There has to be an action to take. If we stop in that moment of humanness and say, how can I bring soul in? How can I make this, like Martin Luther King was righteous indignation, plus love. Gandhi was, you know, uh, soulful understanding. He mixed it with love. He, he, all of these great leaders who actually affected positive change, not, they weren't perfect humans, but in the moments they were so human, they knew, they knew they needed to tap into soul and that power. And to them, both of my people believe was God. So they were able to come out with the most profound statements, yes. the most ecumenical, the most um, productive Let's just say productive, right? They actually well, they, they affected change. what they came to achieve. Right. They affected change. And that yes. is what it's all about. about. Yeah. Right. And so, so if we if we want to be purposeful and we want to be good, let's let's understand what goodness is. Goodness is in that state of I, you know, like let's just say we put the O in good, meaning what's God, what is good. If we're human interpretations, we could that could be the word what the word means. Yeah. That we're acting in our best way, in our best self, with that combo going. And that creates a peace in that moment. We're always gonna have issues going on. There'll always be a hurricane, there'll always be, you know, people who are challenging or angry and not willing to be in that good state. So it's up to us to bring ourselves back to that moment where we have the clarity to say, I'm just being very human right now okay that's because yeah. i am human. can't fail at that if i try but <laughs> i choose to be i choose to be more yeah that state of peace is the is could be so hard depending on the challenge sure. going on it could be like crazy hard but part of what i teach is about making sure that everything else we do in our life allows us to get there meaning we're not eating a ton of sugar that makes it impossible because our biochemistry is so far off or using bad chemicals on our body that throw our hormones off so we can't get there. Or, you know, constantly thinking negative, putting ourselves in a negative state of being, watching television too much, commercials, news, all the things that we do that add up to our inability to stay in that zone, you know, where we can, no matter what goes on, still choose to bring in soulful, you know, advice and soulful leadership. Does that make sense? It does. And one of the things that came up for me as you were speaking was, you know, like when we are participating in all of those um, things outside of us, right, that have the potential to bombard us with energy that is less than peaceful. Mm -hmm. And we are allowing them to take our focus. And I actually spoke about this yesterday. We're actually giving our power over. Yes. to those other forces when our power, as you've so beautifully described, is really in our creative ability. We are not creating when we're giving our attention and power over to something that's creating unrest within us. We are now separating from our true nature and separating from our power. And so 
it's also, it's like the setup, right? You talked about the ego. It's, it, it's how the ego sets us up to go into a greater, you know, gap of separation because all of those things that you described, what does it do? It brings us right into that place of judgment. And the moment we start that judgment, which is, it's such a powerful thing to really be aware of, we are creating more separation within ourselves that then can only be projected out into others around us and the world. And that's when we start to become separate from life and believe that we're here alone and that we're insignificant or that the world is against us or that there is never anything that we can do. So I'm so happy that you brought that up. And um, what could I be? contribute something to the idea of the ego? An understanding that I came to that I'm not sure if other people share, but I'll share it with you now and see if it resonates. Yeah. I don't, I don't um, feel that I, there's any kind of power given to the ego. It's the opposite, where the ego is powerless. It's kind of just human in there and acting at will, you know, it's just there. Whereas um, if I took, take myself out and be the third party and see an, a human person with an ego and a soul that are in one kind of entity, and as a third party, I can look down and humorously see the interaction going on. And maybe the e human ego is running amok because of environmental issues, because of the biochemistry in the body, because of trauma from the past, uh, because of energy shared, because we're all empathic, right? We're picking up. Um, because of belonging, wanting to be part of something. If I can see that, it's not about the ego having this power over us. It's more about uh, everything that's going on with the human that's kind of like blocking out the soul and the, and the potential for the soul. So what and is then, our, yeah. we, yeah. and it's our job to sort of cleanse ourselves continuously, ground, get grounded. Um, I don't run away from negative people, but I definitely, if I'm in the company of one, put up an aura of protection. I call it the spiritual order of the highest protection. And I pump out also pump out a lot of love, which acts as a complete bubble, you know, and it, it, it enables them to be able to pick up on love. So I don't need to run. Love yeah. is way more powerful. But the fact is that if you are in the company of someone who's pumping out negativity, you'll be affected by it if you don't do that. Okay. So, so everything has the potential. Our fears come out where self-preservation is a very human thing. We, we're always self-preserving. We're always trying to find community. We're always trying to find people who think like us. That's all human and allowed because we're made that way. But if we're not purposefully living each moment and each day, waking up saying, no, I'm living the best day today, we're not going on that journey of purpose. We're going on a come what may day. <laughs> and we're allowing for things to unfold and that will just we'll walk into whatever. And so it's us in the willingness to be more purpose driven and to achieve that peace in a moment in any given day we'll be in the best shape the best mindset we'll do our our prayers and mantras we'll eat clean foods we won't drink too much alcohol and do all those things that kind of cloud that ability to tap in okay kind of messes with the brain and and almost blocks out the goodness and the and, and better than the better than human thing we can do and so that is where true peace can come to when we're truly understanding the process and we don't feel like, oh, the ego is going to trigger any minute. I got to watch out. It's more like everything I do to remain in goodness myself gives me that much more opportunity to stay in tune, to be peaceful on my journey and my mission or my job or whatever it is. And to all my relationships, I know that I'm not going to be triggered by my past trauma because I've worked on that past trauma. I've let go of it. You know, I've healed out of it. I'm not going to be triggered by sugar and crap because I'm not going to eat it. Or if I do and I lose my mind the next day because of it, I'm going to right away ask myself, okay, what did I eat and drink yesterday that could be causing this, making me feel imbalanced or angry or tense or anxiety ridden. So once we learn that, oh my gosh, it's like, 
there's so much freedom and actually peace that comes from it because we're not beholden to an outside force anymore. We totally, we take responsibility, we take control, we create the change we want. And that is a matter of having um, access then to the power that's within us. And that's, yes. yeah, I think what we were both saying. So, um, well, go back you know, to your water really analogy, go back to the water analogy. It, there might be water there, but if you don't know how to turn on the faucet or recognize that you can turn on the faucet to get the water, that's another, that's what we don't do. We don't know it. We're not taught it. Certainly not right. taught in school. And I don't even know if we're taught it in some of our religions. We're, sure. told, we're told mostly to be, to be, uh, be uh, behaviorally to, um, what's the word I'm using, to be obedient. But we're not necessarily understanding what that means. You know, we're obedient to a God or are we obedient to that soul within us that says, you know what, don't eat that food because you're going to be whacked out later and you're not going to be able to handle the argument that's going to ensue in your family. <laughs> you know, like, right. too bad we can't see the future. We would definitely eat better or do better or this or yeah. that. The point is to have faith in the direction that we're being shown when we're connected to soul so that we can stay connected all the time to that higher part of ourselves. Does that make sense? Absolutely. So, um, as our audience can see, there are so many aspects of peace and so many ways that we can cultivate that peace within us, but it takes commitment and it takes, you know, the knowingness that this really is the key to you having at your disposal all the parts of you, right, that can integrate and create happiness and health in some I'm really sorry for the, for the dog. That's okay. Dog can chime in too. Oh, come here. Yeah. But anyway, so, you know, I, I want to thank you for bringing up all these wonderful aspects of peace and for our audience again, um, please continue to tune in because these conversations will take place every single day because we are here on a mission and that mission is to cultivate more energy of peace within each and every one of us. And if you're watching that, you've been drawn to this for a reason. So we need you. We are not complete without you. Please join in, have conversations with your friends, your family. Better yet, have them with your enemies. Make peace, right? And we remember that we're all in this together. And um, I have been sharing this peace pledge with everyone and, and I'd like to share it with you now and Donna see if this resonates with you too. I pledge to extend peace into my circle of influence through cultivating my own peaceful heart, my clear intentions, taking personal responsibility and compassionate action. I take this peace pledge and I pass it on to you through my peaceful heart. Of course, for anyone who would like a copy of that, just you know, message me below and I'm happy to I share do. that with you. I do. But Donna, can you give our audience some um, ending words? to bring this message home to them, that peace is theirs. Love is way more powerful than any negative energy that we could possibly create as humans. Think about it, that's simply human, but everything else beyond that is what has the power. So have faith in the powers that be, believe in you and me. We absolutely, what we want is what everybody wants, truthfully, underneath all the anger and everything else. It's what, that's what the world does want. And we will win. We will achieve that. Woo! Just got God bumps, Donna. Wow, that wow. always happens when we speak. I love it. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. And I hope you'll come back again and, and help to continue these conversations. And um, yeah, you're just the best and I love you. As often as you want, I am there. This is my Thank gig, you. this is what I'm doing. So I love to you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks right. everybody for giving us your precious time and peace in and peace out. Thank you. Bye-bye.